Give him the forecast. Omega level threat detected. Ancient sands, heed my command and reclaim these relics of hatred. analyzing the superhero costumes of Storm. As mentioned in previous character analysis, costuming is often overlooked as unimportant when it comes to storytelling, and this is even more prevalent when it comes to animated media. This is a shame considering the amount of effort that goes into creating the designs of some of the most beloved fictional characters. Aurora Monroe, more commonly known as Storm, is not an original member of the X-Men, but she's easily one of the most recognizable and valuable members the team has ever known. An Omega level mutant with the ability to control the weather to such extremes that she could devastate the planet. Storm joined the X-Men in 1975 as the second wave of mutants to replace the original team. Created by Dave Cockrum and Lime Ween. I'm pretty sure I mispronounced the second one's name so I apologize in advance but it will be on the screen. Storm has easily cemented herself as not only one of the most important X-Men, but one of the most important superheroes in the entire genre. As one of the more ethereal and fashion-forward members of the X-Men, Storm has had a tremendous amount of different costumes and fashion looks. In this video, we will be discussing three costumes Storm has donned that I adore, and three costumes Storm has donned that I abhor. Keep in mind this list is completely subjective, and if you have a different opinion from mine, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Shall we begin? To end this video on a good note, we'll begin with the videos I abhor, leading with Revolution Storm, written by Chris Claremont and making her debut May 2000. I should start by admitting that I didn't read this X-Men series, so I can't speak on how well this costume fits into the story. This judgment is purely based on aesthetic, as most of these are even if I do know the story, and this costume I don't care much for. Oddly enough, I'd say this is one of Storm's costumes that closely resemble a traditional superhero guard with the flowing purple cape thigh-high boot heels, and the X symbol plastered center on her chest. I love the color, and although Storm isn't adverse to being seen in purple, this amount is way too distracting. This costume honestly strikes me as something Sindel would keep in her wardrobe. As lovely as this costume is on its own, it doesn't fit Storm's goddess of nature vibes, but somehow I feel like it works when attempting to appeal to Storm's mystical ties. Even though this costume isn't hideous, it definitely isn't one of my favorite designs for Queen Aurora. Next, we have Extreme Storm, also written by Chris Claremont and illustrated by Salvador La Roca. This team made their debut July 2001 and the entire X-Men roster during this era screamed superhero meets Y2K. Taking a note from Great X Mentions, a fantastic channel covering X-Men news, the red is way too bold and distracting. Storm's colors were based on her entire team's theme, leaving no room for unique color patterns. And honestly, the entire squad's designs share a lot of similarities. This isn't something I typically consider a bad thing, like the Sailor Soldiers, or even the X-Men Evolution iteration of the X-Men. But for characters as unique as the X-Men, and Storm particularly, I don't think this was a good call. Almost everyone shares this blinding red and faint blue color palette, along with oversized cuffs. This kind of reminds me of Carol Danvers' most recognizable costume when she was known as Miss Marvel, minus the cape of course. I do like the headdress and the high ponytail, but I like this hairstyle much more during Hickman's run. Once again, I don't think this costume is particularly hideous, but as mentioned with the previous look, it doesn't give ethereal weather witch, and that's what I'm looking for when it comes to Storm. We end the outfits I abhor with one of Storm's most divisive costumes during her entire career. Storm's punk design created by Paul Smith and Chris Claremont. You either love or hate this design. 
and I'm clearly not a fan. As I researched Storm for this video, I learned that this design wasn't intended to be taken seriously or be a costume store war for a significant amount of time, making me even less inclined to like it. I find it fascinating how divisive this costume is though. You either love this look with all your heart or detest it with a passion. One of my favorite physical attributes about Storm has always been her big, bountiful, gorgeous, thick hair. Seeing it relegated to a mohawk just doesn't work for me. I do, however, enjoy this hairstyle combined with her 90s animated costume. And even though I'm not against a character radically changing their style, this was not a time it pleased my personal taste. Clad in black with leather pants, a tube top, and a matching vest topped off with a studded choker. Like the previous costumes, I do think this is well crafted. It's aggressive, sharp, and loud polar opposite attributes to Storm's aesthetic. I do enjoy this look more when Storm wears a crop top with it, particularly when it's white. But overall, the punk style has never been something I've warmed up to for the goddess of the elements. I've only just recently warmed up to the mohawk. Now for the costumes I adore. Leading with classic Storm created by Len Wein and David Cockrum. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but yeah. I apologize. In making her debut in the first issue of Giant Size X-Men, May 1975, Storm's original design is forever iconic. Being so attuned with nature, in her early years, it wasn't uncommon to see Storm wearing little to nothing. This costume screams ethereal weather goddess with its giant cape, unique thigh-high heels, and a creative bronze clasp that attaches her top to her bottom. The cape connecting to her wrist cuffs is a particularly stylish and unique touch. It feels like she utilizes the cape to enhance her ability to fly. The headdress pairs nicely with the design lining the top of her boots, and the cape outlined in yellow is a nice way to make the black more bold. Also, the gem resting on top of her bust gives another additional eye-catching but not distracting touch. This design is truly brilliant and tends to come back with slight variations over time. One of my particular favorites being when it's inverted to white. Next, we have Storm as she appears during the Hellfire Gala. Designed by Russell Dotterman, I apologize, and making her debut June 2021. This costume became an instant favorite the moment I laid my eyes on it. Storm showed up to the event wearing a black sleeved leotard with golden pointed African warrior shoulders and matching rings around her wrist and neck that are typically only worn by married women in South Africa. I'm pretty sure Storm wasn't married at this time, but the accessory is extremely welcome. It's also a sign of wealth. Storm's hair is one of my favorite parts, being a thick cloud to blend with a perpetual storm she generated in place of a cape. To top this look off, Storm's thigh-high black heels with golden tippies really brings this entire look together. This costume was so well received that Storm took this look into active combat for a short period of time, and I would love to see it return. We end this video with my favorite costume Queen Aurora has ever done, Storm as she appears in the early 90s X-Men Gold Line created by Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri. Perhaps it's nostalgia for the classic 90s animated show that defines my love for this costume. But I don't care. It's such a task to make a costume that's the same color as your hair work with the exception of black. It often drowns out the character's features. This isn't the case with Storm. Her all-white look is one of her most recognizable for a reason. This costume touches several bases I always love to see on Storm. The big pointed attention-grabbing shoulders and a cape that connects to her wrist, giving the effect that she uses her cape to assist her with controlling the air currents for flight. Like her original design, Storm's cape is outlined with yellow, beautifully enhancing the white, along with two large red X symbols on her chest. I feel like this costume is a perfect combination of traditional superhero culture and Storm's African heritage. In the currently airing X-Men 97, we get to see this look again combined with an updated mohawk, and she looks fantastic. For the woman with dramatic speeches and the power to destroy the world on a whim, this costume has the perfect amount of theatrical flair. It continues to be my favorite to this day, 
and I would love to hear what yours is in the comments. Thank you for watching this short analysis on my opinion on Storm's costumes throughout the ages. Just several, she's had so many. So if you would like to see a bigger video on that, I always leave this option open. If this video gets to a thousand likes in the first month, I will do at least an hour long Storm deep dive into her costumes analyzing as many as I can. But all of this is possible with my patron's assistance. I would like to give a huge shout out to Kirsten Letts, Jerry Jenkins, Mortonette Stevens, and Clever B. You are my wonder patrons and the greatest people in the world. If you would like to be a patron to support me to help me keep continuing this YouTube journey, you could be a patron for as little as a dollar a month in the description box down below. Anything that comes to YouTube goes early there at least a day or so, sometimes a lot more early. Just depends on copyright and stuff like that. And you get your name in the credit roll. So I would just really appreciate the support. It helps me a lot more than people think. Right now I'm currently working on the Wonder Woman video, which is this super large analysis that will cover all of her theatrical releases, animated appearances, and so on and so forth. All the Wonder Woman stuff that you can see in media minus her comic book appearances. I'm also converting more to video essays like this for my channel because of copyright reasons. However, I do want to give reactions more of a chance. Uh, I'm just a little inspired to try that again. So I might continue She-Ra. I'm still where I left off and um, I might do a different series, but if you would just like to see me react to something, comment below. Let me know who you would like to see next for an analysis. I'm thinking I'll do Emma Frost because she appeared in X-Men 97 and I'm really excited to see what she has planned. You should check that show out if you haven't. It's super amazing. Like, don't let the art style deter you. It's a beautiful show to me, but I know that it's off-putting for some people. Check it out. It's really worth it. I go live on TikTok on the weekends usually to do watch parties. We watch anime. We've been watching Hasman Hotel, uh, Demon Slayer, Bleach, The Thousand Year Blood War. We finished Fruits Baskets like that, so on and so forth. So if you want more like live action reactions <laughs> from me, it's uh, really fun. Check me out over there. Um, the link's also in the description box down below. As will all of my other socials, they will be linked in the description box down below. That helps me tremendously too in a non-monetary way. Liking, commenting, subscribing, of course, helps me tremendously. I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. That helps a lot. So uh, thank you. Let me know what you thought of the video and I hope you have a great day. I love you and thank you for watching.